So a few weeks ago, a patient asked me to do a craft glucose tolerance test. Um, I thought that was interesting. I had stumbled across Joseph Kraft and his glucose tolerance test um, several months ago like uh, m and planned to do a video on it. And like many of my video plans, it's way down the list. Um, as I began to talk with my patient and look at this, I decided to go ahead and move it to the front. <clears throat> so we're going to mention it. We'll do a brief one on on the glucose tolerance test by uh, Joseph Kraft today. Uh, but first, a brief introduction of myself. I'm Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, uh, preventive uh, medicine. Heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, uh, all those bad things. D Alzheimer's, dementia. We'll help you prevent that. <clears throat> so, Dr. Joseph Kraft was a pathologist. He did 14,000 glucose tolerance tests and he began to look at something different from what most he, his glucose tolerance test was different from uh, the glucose tolerance test that most docs were doing and have done just to remind you actually even going so deep as to do a glucose tolerance test is beyond most standards of medicine that you see today uh, but the number of false negatives uh, in terms of diabetes and insulin resistance, just using the standard is just uh, terrible. Um, <clears throat> the standards involve basically just fasting glucose and um, hemoglobin A1C. <clears throat> Oral glucose tolerance test is a far better way to look. But as you begin to study uh, Dr. Uh, Kraft's oral glucose tolerance test, it's even better. It's far more detailed and far, uh, a little bit more of a headache, significantly more, more of a headache. There are two things. In addition to, manage, to measuring uh, glucose at zero, one, or fasting one and two hours, he actually looks at a five-hour glucose tolerance test. So that's a major headache for the patient as well as the lab. The other thing he does, in addition to man measuring glucose, he measures insulin. So, <clears throat> it's a five-hour test, uh, measures uh, insulin as well as glucose. He is able to uh, diagnose, with this test, it does appear that you're able to diagnose uh, disorders of glucose metabolism much more quickly, diabetes and insulin resistance. And um, basically, one of the assumptions that he makes is that hyperinsulinemia is a problem in and of its own right. Now, there are a lot of people that would agree with him. The folks that I work with would certainly agree with him. Insulin um, does appear to uh, instigate or increase cardiovascular inflammation. Now, <clears throat> he wrote a book called Diabetes, The Diabetes Epidemic and You. Um, I'll do a book review on that uh, a little bit later. But in there he talks about five different patterns. A normal insulin response, a type 2, which shows increased insulin, type 3, which shows increased insulin and delayed response, type 4, Still both increase and delayed, but a huge increase in the, um, in the amount of insulin. Type 5 is similar to what you would see with a type 1 diabetic where you have very little insulin response at all. So, <clears throat> let's look at that graphically. That sentence sounds maybe a little bit confusing. I've got three graphs to, that will show it. This first one, the blue one is a normal insulin response. It peaks at about an hour and about a level of uh, 50. The type two uh, peaks at the same time at about an hour, but more at a level of 100. Type three peaks at about 100, but, does, but is delayed to about an hour and a half, two hours. 
Type 4 is a pattern with a huge increase, peaking at a level of 200 and at, a, um, at about a two-hour period. These are insulin levels, by the way, not uh, glucose levels. <clears throat> Here's another way of looking at it. This green one is normal. Again, you see it peaking at about 50 at about an hour, or half an hour, excuse me. Um, actually, this number is a little bit higher, um, but you'd still see the same pattern. You get a delay and an increase in the uh, insulin amount. With that type 4, you get a huge increase. And type 5, here, this red one, is little or no insulin reaction at all. Again, something similar to what you'd see with a diabetic, a type 1 type of diabetic. I think I'll always have problems with my uh, visuals. <clears throat> Here's an, another and a final way of looking at it. Type 1 pattern, green peaking 50 to 100 at half an hour to an hour. Type 2 is an increase, uh, still peaking at um, half, half an hour to an hour, uh, but significant amounts going over 100. Type 3, increased amount going over 100, but also peaking later, more like 2 and 3, uh, or two, hour, 2 hours. Type 4, that peak, that delayed peak at two hours or so, and a huge increase up to two to three hundred, uh, or excuse me, 150 to 200 um, blood level of insulin. And then the final one is the blue one, where there's just no insulin response at all. So again, that thank you for your attention. That's Dr. Joseph Kraft and uh, the Kraft Oral Glucose Tolerance Test.